Hey everybody, this is Emma in very dramatic lighting <laughs> uh, from the Future Perfect Project. And for those who don't know us, we provide free arts workshops to queer youth of all ages, but primarily ages 12 to 22. Hi, Z. Thanks everyone for coming. We have such a cool guest, um, Ronnie Jones from The Politician, which is a personal favorite show of mine. Very excited. And here she is. And please go live with me. Let me invite you to do that. Do, do, do. Hi, Modern Mormon Hansen. Hi, Sasha. So many friends. And hey, Ronnie. Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you fine. Can you hear me? Wonderful. This is my first live, so I'm like, oh my gosh. You're a pro. I had assumed you'd been live a million times. I was like, just log no. on. Live? <laughs> I was intimidating, so apologies if I'm like. <laughs> oh my god, no, you're a natural. I love your hair, by the way. Thank you. I just did it. It's you know quarantine, like you know something new. <laughs> yeah, when you're in, you gotta switch it up, right? Yeah, you do. You gotta. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for joining us for your very first live. It's an honor. Me. <laughs> and we're such big fans of you, and just so grateful you made time for us and of for course. the queer youth. Um, so we do free workshops every Tuesday with queer youth from all around the country and all around the world, actually, like we serve young people that live in Chile and in Mexico City. And so um, we always check in at the beginning of every workshop. And I thought we could check in now. So I'll go first and then I'll pass it to you. So okay. we just introduce ourselves by saying our name, our pronouns, where we live and where we are and how we're feeling <laughs> in a sentence. So <laughs> it sounds like a lot, but it's not. I'm Emma, and she's feeling confident, for a change, <laughs> in Philadelphia. Okay. So I say, I'm Ronnie. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm Ronnie, and she's feeling okay in New York. <laughs> okay, amazing, amazing, amazing. All feelings are welcome here and <laughs> at all of our workshops. So how do you identify on the LGBTQIA plus spectrum, personally? And is queer, like, a word you enjoy? Um, I mean, queer is a word that I enjoy. I don't necessarily use it for myself. I think I use okay. it like an a, 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 a overarching thing. Um, but I identify as lesbian. Lesbian, gay. Yeah. I love women. I don't like, you know. Same. Same. <laughs> Same. Cool, Same. cool, cool. How could you not? Um, <laughs> when did this kind of become clear to you? Because I think the moment where you come out is a lot different than the moment where you kind of are like, ooh, I'm a little different, I think. Ooh, that's a good question. Okay, so basically, when I recognize there was something a little bit different, and then um, as opposed to when I came out, yeah, that's a great question. Um, so when I was when I was little, I just remind like like I would say around seven, eight, nine, all that. I just remember looking at women in a way that was just like, oh, that you're pretty you know you you see you see your teachers and you're obsessed with your teacher oh my god my teacher's so pretty and it's so you know whatever innocent and then as I got to like high school I was like well, teacher's looking real pretty <laughs> 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 um but and like uh just having crushes um but I believe it was like high school when I realized like okay this is this is this is who I am but I didn't come out until I was um a graduating senior in college I was a very super focused individual. Like I played basketball in high school at like a really competitive, oh, wow. on a really competitive basketball team. So my priority was, you know, getting a basketball scholarship. And then when I got to college, my priority was graduating early or on time. And so I was always the person that was like, if I have a girlfriend, I'm going to be distracted and I want to be focused and like goody two shoes and things like that. So, but I knew who I was. I just wasn't fully ready to, to be out into the to the world and it wasn't until I came out into my to my um to my parents that I really started um I think becoming my my true self my true true self and my confident self self what the heck is self self <laughs> oh I didn't it must be like the audio on here because I was like yeah that's a word to me self <laughs> um, okay I didn't even notice that <laughs> so I think it's really interesting because we work with young people that are out and some that aren't and some that are like I don't know, we're all constantly evolving. So you might have to come out a bunch of times if you're a queer person. So Absolutely, yeah. I'm wondering what your example of like a 
who was your first queer person or your first lesbian person growing up? Like, what, what was the vibes growing up around gayness? Okay, so, um, my, feel yeah, sure. Um, I have a, an aunt who is gay, um, and she and her wife now, um, they've been together since, I, oh, since I was ex so young, and they were just always around and loving and, um, I think when I was younger, I didn't necessarily know what gay was. Right. I just, they were together and they liked each other. And that was that. <laughs> you know, and my family didn't make a big deal out of it. Um, uh, they loved her <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, as a couple. Um, and, but I will say that there was a person when I was in middle school that I really be admired because um, she was my age. And uh, she was a, a basketball teammate that I had that was unapologetically herself from um, the age of 11 currently, um, a, a, a more masculine presenting lesbian and was just doing her thing and just unbelievably confident. And I would look at her and be like, wow, like you are, you don't know how important that you are to me in this moment, but like, I remember going to my um, high school reunion in 2000, little, little. Um, <laughs> and she and she was there, and I just remember telling her like, you are were everything to me, even though we were teammates and comrades and things like that. You were absolutely a hero of mine, and continue to be a hero of mine because it is so hard for for kids to to truly be themselves because I do think that kids are very harsh and sometimes cruel and it's difficult, especially if you feel like you don't have a support system. But luckily uh, my friend had an amazing family and she was surrounded by people that loved her um, uh, unconditionally, uh, including uh, her, her teammates. So uh, it was, it was amazing. That's beautiful. Shout out to her. <laughs> Shout out. Seriously. I feel like so rare to be like an out mask lesbian at 11. <laughs> just like completely un unapologetic and everybody was like hey what's up yeah it's cool we down i think that oh. I, can't, I can't speak to her experience you know 24 7 um but i know that from 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 this area it was nothing but love always and admiration nice and what where did you grow up where it was just like i grew up in um, silver spring maryland so it was about 15 20 minutes outside of dc wow so there's just like uh, basketball playing Two basketball playing lesbians. One was outwardly lesbian. That's very cool. And you mumbled when you said when you graduated high school, but I'm interested, like, because I feel like an 11 year old lesbian is like a new phenomenon, but it was happening when you were in high school or when you were in elementary school. Well, like middle school, middle school. Uh, definitely, definitely high school. There was more. I just think that I grew up in an area that was extremely diverse, with it was like uh, ethnically diverse. Um, and and I just was exposed to 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 everything, and I think that 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 kind of has helped me navigate the world at large. Um, but but yeah, like that experience mm. uh, helped me see that there are other there. Very, sorry, my cat is trying to push off with us. Oh, you're good. And I'm like, no, not on my laptop. Um, but just an, uh, a a wonderful experience to be able to be surrounded by things that can help you in the long run when, when you grow older and be exposed to different people. So that's a beautiful thing. Cause then it's normalized for you. Absolutely. Yeah. Nothing, nothing is like, Oh my gosh. And yeah. What is that? So. That's great. I also have a queer <laughs> family member and it's like weird, like my grandma's gay. And so it was weird growing up and being like, Oh, that's just grandma's friend. That's a girl. And they live together. And then one day you're like, Oh, okay. Okay. I yeah. That's what happened to you. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I was like, oh, 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 okay. <laughs> and then later you're like, oh, I'm that. <laughs> I will be gay grandma okay. someday. <laughs> so it's it was really cool watching you in The Politician because for many reasons, you're super talented. And also it was just like, I loved how gay that show was. Like, yeah, I loved it. And so you play a gender nonconforming person on the mm -hmm. politician what was that like and do you identify as gender non-conforming yourself um, i would say that i do identify as gender non-conforming so it was definitely more of like okay I, when i first got the breakdown for the role and and it, this, the description was there i was like i see myself in this person oh cool you know so it was just like okay it's my first first thing out so like i'm not you know thrown for a loop as far as aesthetic representation right mm -hmm. um, 
So uh, that was that was easy to do. But I also just thought like how cool that uh, a person that looks like me <laughs> can be uh, on a Netflix show. You know, you don't see a lot of that representation. Yeah. Lena Waithe is amazing, and, and she was one of the first people I saw that looked like me on television. Mm -hmm. And because of her, I was like, okay, Hollywood is doing something right now. Like, what's going on? Maybe I have a chance. Um, but it was so great to be a part of that show because I don't think there was, like, any, like, coming out thing. It was just what it was, kind of like a utopia of of what I personally feel the world should be at some point and could be if people mm -hmm. just realize that um, – being different is no big deal. <laughs> like, mind your business, number one. Yeah. Um, but it's just, it was just, I love being a part of uh, that world. Um, and to be able to bring Sky to life was, was a, a, a big part of that. And I really love that character. <laughs> yeah. And so the funny thing about Sky, too, is that like, season one, it's like, Oh, like, how can we get how can we get that person on our team? Like, we need the gender nonconforming person. Like, it was like clout in that universe. <laughs> the strand, yeah. Rather than something to be like ashamed of. Right, right, right. Yeah. Which is so beautiful. What has the response been like for you? Like, do you get DMs from other GNC people? Oh my goodness, yes, and it's, especially young people. Um, mm. My gosh, you're an inspiration. And when I hear that, I'm like, oh my. Uh, no please <laughs> no no <laughs> it's so flattering but it's also like who me um and um I just appreciate people you know saying um, kind words to me I was always nervous like oh my god am I good enough and things like that I think we all struggle with that but the reception has been amazing um you know uh I love engaging with fans so <laughs> I love talking with people um, especially about the business because I'm, I'm I'm still on a learning journey. I think we all are for a lot most of our lives, um, and I am willing to share anything that I can um, with people. But it's been an amazing reception, and people like the show and are excited for, you know, whenever it comes out again. I don't know when that is, but <laughs> um, there's two out two seasons that you could go watch. Yeah, thank you for your transparency. <laughs> You're like I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> You said that you're like still learning. And I think like a, a misconception a lot of people have, our young people are like, they look at someone who's like, oh, you made it. You're on Netflix. You've got it oh. all figured out now. And so you do you still feel like you're coming out, so to speak, as, a, as an artist and as an actor? Oh, that is a great way to phrase it. I love it. I'm stealing it. Thank you. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Because, I mean, I, I'm in my 30s. Um, so this is something that I'm experiencing. I'm not gonna say later in life because I don't want to like make myself feel like a geriatric <laughs> here. But uh, um, I've lived a few, a few different lives, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, because of that, I'm jumping into something a little bit later. And it's obviously a beast of an industry, right? So. Uh, I use the resources that I have you, to ask questions, to ask my manager questions. I am not afraid of looking dumb by asking a dumb question. I'd rather ask the question <laughs> and get the right answer rather than just like stumble around not knowing, you know? So um, I'm very much learning and I'm, ex and I, one of the biggest pieces of advice, advice that I have is just to, to use the resources that you have, you know? Um, and that's what I've been doing. But yes, I am learning yes. <laughs> some hard, lessons, some amazing lessons, some lessons that I obviously will take with me throughout this journey. But yeah, I'm still growing and learning as an artist and, and tapping into things that I want to do, things that I want to accomplish, things that I want to create, you know, and um, yeah, and growing in that respect. Which is so beautiful because um, what, a, what a great thing to like remind people of, like you don't, you don't, you still get to make your own goals and say like, what, what do I want to do as an artist? Because. Right. Right. I think it's, yeah. Because if you're all like artist an thing. bogged down with like the auditions and the self tapes and, and things like that. And you, you also get bogged down with the nose, you know, I, I've got n n many nose after the politician, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's the, the reality of the business. But at the same time, um, finding those ways to create on your own so that you can have the say I has really helped me a lot in terms of in terms of remain, remaining creative um and to give myself the power a bit because in this industry it's a lot of times other people that have the power 
and not necessarily you. Um, so now with the creating of your own thing, you, 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 you are the yes person. You are making the decisions. And it sometimes feels good to, to go up against the, the juxtaposition of the other. Yeah, I mean, if you're yeah. the director, producer, writer, it's like, yeah, I think I'll cast myself in that. Yeah, cast myself. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there you go. That's a win, <laughs> an instant yes. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, if you ever want me to like audition for something, so it's like, sorry, you didn't get it. <laughs> right. We're going with the next choice. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> that's cool. What are you What are you working on that you're in charge of saying yes to? Well, um, I created a show over quarantine called After School History. Um, it's a little little bootleg little show. <laughs> um, <laughs> that basically tests my um, expertise as a lighting person, a sound person, and an editing right. person. Right. Um, but, you know, I, I, I'm an uh, avid lover of history. I don't know. I think history is fascinating. Um, I know a lot of people are bored by it. And because <laughs> people are bored by it, um, I take uh, uh, little known history lessons or hi history that we were taught in a specific way from a specific viewpoint and, um, and make it funny, and, but also um, educate. Um, and it was a way for me to, first of all, learn because I love, love to just read and learn and two, to, to write, um, and to, uh, entertain people if, if, if they so chose, like if, if two people watch it, that's, that's great for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I put that on Instagram and it's, it's done pretty well over quarantine. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm a solo show. My fiance helps me out sometimes too with nice. like the the, the promotion of it and everything like that but I get to like do what I want and say what I want and um just create and it has been really cathartic for me uh first of all to not be bored out of my mind and to, um like I said to, to 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 call the shots on something and to make the decisions yeah and that's such a good it's so important as an artist to I just it took me so long to realize I don't have to wait around on like typically like a straight white person to right. be like, all right, we're picking you now. And it's like, no. Exactly. Let yeah. Sometimes you got to take the onus, you know, like you gotta, you know, I'm, I'm a person who, who struggles with self self doubt till this day. Like that is, that is who I am. I struggle with it. Like it's, it's a thing. Um, but when I am lifting myself up with the projects that I create, um, it, it helps in that confidence because you are, first of all, putting yourself out there mm -hmm. and you are challenging yourself and you are being your own boss. Like that automatically gives you like a sense of, all right, I'm doing it. It also gives you a product. So, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And to all the young people watching that we work with that are aspiring actors or acting in their high school, uh, their high school productions, which a lot of the young people we work with are, um, that's amazing. Just, like, you can be on a Netflix show and still have self doubt. Like, that's not something that goes away. No, I'm, listen, I, I wish it went away. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could sit up here and say, uh, you know, I have no more self doubt ever since I booked that show. Imposter syndrome is real, and it's just mm -hmm. a matter of getting over it. And I have to actively work on that daily. Mm -hmm. My cat was like, yes, girl, you do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good to have but a yeah. cat to be your cheerleader, for sure. Yeah. yeah. And I love, like, just, like, <laughs> a queer creative being like, yeah, I'll make my girlfriend do it. Yeah, I'll make my fiancé be my lighting person, be my microphone, be my filming. <laughs> oh, my gosh. My fiancé absolutely has saved the day numerous times. She's like, why don't you do this? Calm down. Don't worry about it. Do this. <laughs> It's okay. You got it. <laughs> oh my God. That's amazing. Well, just yeah. from the top. <laughs> I'm like, oh. <laughs> Take five craft services, yeah. all of it. Take a breath. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My girlfriend like was like, I think on a job app wrote down that she like PA would on one of my music videos. And I was like, you really did though. <laughs> <laughs> you did. Yes. <laughs> Much. Um, love that. I think she's watching right now. So sorry for embarrassing you. <laughs> um, my Beyonce. <laughs> Who does it? <laughs> um, so when did you start acting? When did you like, just like you realized you were gay and then you came out? When did you realize you were an artist? <laughs> gay, start acting. Um, no, uh, so I worked for Homeland Security for about four years. Whoa. Yeah. Before I moved, to, I'm celebrating my, this is, this was, this will, this is my fifth year in New York City. I celebrated my fifth year anniversary um, February 8th. And so 
uh, prior to moving here, I worked for Homeland Security for about four, four and a half years. Wild. Um, I was a basketball player. When I say I lived a whole bunch of lives, like that's what I'm talking about. Um, and so when you mentioned like kids being in their high school productions, I didn't have that. I had my wow. high school. I played basketball year round. Like it was the thing. Um, I didn't have a chance to, or I didn't tap into um, the artistic side until much later. Um, so when I was working for the government, I was like, oh my God, I'm so bored. Um, <laughs> And important work, but I was like, Lord. Um, and I started this uh, Instagram account where I did uh, funny videos or videos that I thought were funny. And people shared them. People liked them. And it was my first time performing, even though mm -hmm. obviously I was getting things around. And it kind of took off for a little bit. And then I was like, I'm bored again. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just hankering for something different, a change of pace, change of scenery. Um, and so I was like, I'm moving to New York. I quit the government. I had no job lined up in New York. Don't oh. recommend that one, though. I had savings. <laughs> I had savings, but I, I would recommend having a job. Um, but eventually landed on my feet um, and started performing with this community theater group called After Work Theater. And it was like no pressure. It was all about building community. Um, and that's when I started doing a little bit of musical theater and tapping into that side and absolutely fell in love with it. And uh, I was like, I'm going to try this professionally and see what happens because I'm, I'm, I'm more like a time's running out. I don't know. Let's go. Like, what do we do? What do right. we got to do? <laughs> I don't want to miss out on anything. Mm. Um, and so I went for it and I got lucky, lucky enough to got a manager, um, a manager at the time and um, was able to go on a few auditions. Some of them were okay. Some of them were terrible and some <laughs> of them were uh, great. And I got the politician. So I got very lucky as far as the turnaround time on it. Um, but, and I think that's why I don't take this opportunity lightly and I don't take this platform uh, lightly because I know how fickle this business is and I know, um, how lucky and fortunate I am to have it. So that's, that's how I got into acting. <laughs> what a cool story. <laughs> so inspiring. Like, I think a lot of people are like, oh, it's too late for me to right? act. Yeah. To... What an interesting pivot. Yeah, I think, honestly, like, my mom is, an, like, she was an inspiration of, for, like, never feeling like it's too late. My mom went back, she was with, in corporate America for years and decided at the age of 50 that she was going to go back, back to school wow. and become, become a, a teacher. And so she uh, did that, <laughs> got her master's, and now she's an assistant principal. So... Go mom. Mom is truly the inspiration. You know, she was, <laughs> she's like, I'm done. I'm going to do something else. Something that she's always wanted to do. So nice. Yeah. I wonder if you had like, when you weren't in a creative field, how, how did you express your creativity before you started making those funny videos? That's a good question. I'm not sure if I did. Mm. You know, to be quite honest with you, I think I, at that point, I didn't realize myself as a like a creator or creative. I sure. liked creative things. <laughs> um, um, I've, I've always been a classic movie lover. Um, so mm. I think Ape was watching like my queen Betty Davis on TV, um, or or like on Turner Classic Movies or something, or some, the many DVDs that I have. Um, it was just finding things that I loved. I love uh, Bollywood movies. Um, have a huge collection of those and I would escape within those movies and those songs. Um, so for me, it was like the, the liking creative things, not necessarily somebody said creative adjacent. Yep. I like that. <laughs> People are coming with these gems. Um, <laughs> that's my mom. <laughs> oh, that's my mom. Who's also like hey, mom. made a pivot too. So I, I, like with, with her life. So shout out to moms for paving the way for us. Moms. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, creative adjacent. And then finally being like, I, something's missing. You know, I, I, this, I think this is inherently who I am, a creative. Um, and I just dove in how I felt was the right way to go. That's great. Yeah. yeah there's like, um, something really important, I think, as an artist is to like consume art too. It's not all about like making it. It's just like watch movies, get inspired. Cause that's, that's what informs me and my medium and my songwriting, at least. 
Absolutely. I mean, it's all studying and research, you know, mm -hmm. if you think about this type of creative. It's like going to see Broadway shows and, and watch movies and watch performances and watch singing acts. It's like all of that is is inspiration and, and you're soaking it up. So like <laughs> it's the easiest form of research in my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not compared. You can just be like, it's like, oh, are you just like watching movies? You're so lazy. And it's like, no, I'm researching. Um, do you see this notebook? I'm taking yeah. notes. <laughs> Amazing. The notebook's in my head, but I promise I'm researching. Same, same. Uh, I don't have notebooks. <laughs> yeah, I don't have a notebook. I don't. Um, did you? Oh, so, did you the Sorry, tapestry. Just... Well, then, I know. <laughs> what happened? I'm just seeing people in the comments that I that I know. I'm like, oh my god, hi. <laughs> oh, hey. Okay, first live is going well. We love it. <laughs> right. Um. So this happened really quick for you. You were like, I'm pivoting. And now I'm booked. Um, but you said you've gotten some no's since then. Um, yeah. How is how do you handle that? And has not to if you don't want to talk about this, that's fine. But like, have you run into any obstacles being a queer person or being a lesbian person in this industry? Uh, no, I have not run into any uh, issues um, yet. I hope I never do. Um, yeah. The have been called in for, or most, for the most part, people are writing roles for people like me, um, which is okay. nice um, because I think that people are finally realizing that more stories can be told. Um, yep. Need to be told. Um, and they like, you, <laughs> you would do the, do society a disservice if you only focus on the one specific group of people. Okay, there are many stories. Um, but yeah, like as far as rejection is concerned, first of all, it's part of the business. Um, so that has to be, you have to get used to that. Um, I think that I am very much okay with rejection. Like I get it. It is a business that could be like completely like wrong for a role, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes technically you just don't fit the part or they don't see that in you and it's things are so out of your control or you're just like, Ugh. um, I think the hardest part for me is not, um, the rejection is one thing because I feel like I have built up a life that I love and not everything is dependent upon this, the next gig, you know, I'm not using yeah. like change my life or even before I got the politician, I, I just had an amazing girlfriend, um, an amazing life in New York city. I was happy. I was selling hats. I love hats. Like I was happy. So I think it's finding your happiness outside of the work, um, that yeah. helps, that helps the, um, uh, that helps in the rejection. Uh, I think for me, the hardest part is uh, not beating myself up if I go into an audition and I don't feel like I nailed it. Mm, mm -hmm. At, if, I, if, I for my, if I for myself feel like I nailed an audition, it, for me, I'm like, if I don't get it, then that's their fault. You know, like it's, yeah. I was great and I did great and that's on you. Yeah. <laughs> if I mess up, I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> I did it to myself. I'm the worst. Um, so, uh, it's 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 for me trying to uh, to not be so hard on myself uh, before the um, the booking or or the rejection. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I'm I'm still working on that. Still learning. So <laughs> that's great advice. Yeah, it's yeah. almost like having no expectations is the best way to go. Right. Right. And just go in and have fun. I mean, I'm telling you all this. Meanwhile, a couple of weeks ago, I was like, oh, my God, I, I, yes. I'm so done. Like, I should probably take my own advice. <laughs> oh my Easier said than done, always. Yeah. Well, there's going to be, if they're not watching now, we post all these to our page. So um, we have a lot awesome. of young actors that we work with um, and young people that would say they're aspiring artists, even though I see them <laughs> all artists. So, um yeah. You've been dropping a lot of great advice this whole oh, time. Do you have any advice for people that are like, oh, I want to I wanna do what you do? Um, number one, if I can do it, you can too, period, point blank. Um, and, and you can do all things. You know, like, I preach confidence without having, like, being someone who doesn't have a ton of it. <laughs> I preach it because it is so important. Um, your stories need to be told. Our stories need to be told. And I think we are the best people to tell them. So keep creating, keep working, working through the nose, working through yourself. Um, and 
just know that you can do all things like whatever you this sounds so cliche but you put your mind to it you do it and 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 if somebody tells you no okay keep going you know it's a part of it but but you can do it and like i said if i can so can you if my story if if my story inspires anybody i it beats i'm going for whatever job it is that i want or whatever creative opportunity it is that i want like i'm going to do it if my story can preach that then that's all i Yes, Ronnie, that is great yeah. advice. And I love like, <laughs> I love talking to you because you have this like incredible resume and this incredible lived experience. But like, you're just like, so you want everyone to win. And I really admire that about you. I do. Listen, <laughs> like I'm rude for everybody. Let's go. Uh, we all need to win. That's great. Um, and since we are the Future Perfect Project. Well, before I ask you the last deep question, I need to know about the hat hat store. What kind of hats are you selling? What's going on with the hats? Oh, yeah. So I used to work at a store called Goren Brothers. Um, they have a few yeah. locations nationwide. I feel like I'm still working for them. Like, they have like 30, <laughs> <laughs> 33 locations. They're here, here, here. Um, but I worked in the West Village. I was assistant manager there. And they have really great hats, really great hats, affordable, stylish. I would bring you one, but I don't have one readily available. Oh, actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> here we go. Here's one of them. Okay, but that I actually made this band. Oh my gosh, look at so you. So one of my like hobbies that I'm actively learning, I just, I don't know if you can see right behind me, but the, it, like, it's all, our furniture is black, so you probably can't see it right now, but um, it's hat making supplies. Cool. So, make hats i'm learning to be a haberdasher or a milliner milliner because <laughs> haberdasher i think just sells the hats milliner makes them so yeah but that's like another hobby another creative outlet that i'm you know trying to explore <laughs> nice no, that's so good i was like i don't know if you feel this way but i've been getting into like collaging and shrinky dinks which like isn't as cool as the hats but whatever we're not gonna talk about that but <laughs> <laughs> but i feel like my first thought was like, oh, how do we sell these? How do we monetize this? And I was like, no, just make art. Just have fun, which I don't know if you've had felt that way with the hats. Yeah, like I, so hats are a very interesting thing because not a lot of people wear them. So it's one of those businesses that's like, good luck, girl. Um, but I think for me, because I love them so much and I love like learning new things um i'm gonna start out with myself and if somebody would want me to make them a hat depending on if i get good listen i might be i might be <laughs> terrible we don't know jury's still out put a pin in it um but i think like maybe i'd make some for my friends or anybody that would want one but not necessarily like <laughs> right open it up <laughs> you know like a business business <laughs> oh my gosh that'd be that'd be very cool though um my last question for you, because we are the Future Perfect Project, is what is your vision of a perfect future? Not only for yourself, but for like the gays, <laughs> for everybody. Man. I think my vision for that is a society that celebrates differences um and is not afraid of them i think right now we're living in a world where people are afraid of anything that they mm -hmm. consider consider um other in their eyes um and when i say they i mean like cis straight white male type of thing you know um so like i don't know that would be one where just people celebrate differences and um and i think in, in in the inflection moment that we are in as far as racial um injustice is concerned i think you'd be just treat your fellow neighbor like your neighbor you know mm -hmm. like like you like you actually care about the person next to you um it's hard to feel that way where it seems like we're so divided um but yeah, that would be my thing. And also a, a society where people within our community um, don't have to walk around with a fear that they're going to be alienated once they tell their truth. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of fear around coming out and, and living authentically. And um, I would hope that in the future that that was not a thing, that kids knew for a fact that they would still be loved and supported rather than fearful that they're going to lose everything for being themselves so 
So true. That's a future I want to. And that's yeah. what we're that's what we're working for. If you're watching this and you feel like you're afraid to come out, a great resource is the Trevor Project, which is the our co-founder Celeste Lacine also co-founded the yeah. Trevor Project, and it's mm -hmm. the first ever 24-hour um, suicide prevention hotline for mm -hmm. queer people, queer mm -hmm. young people. Yeah. So there's anybody so you out there that will listen to you and talk to you? That's great. And if there's anybody on here that like would need somebody to come out to, I'm on DM, DM away. Uh, yeah. I've yeah. A and I'm like, that's great. And with advice and things like that. Um, and, and just know that the, the, you can build your own community and there are people out there that love you. Um, and I'm one of them. So. Oh, I, I love you. And I love <laughs> whoever is needs to come out and is watching. <laughs> and we also, we have free arts programming every Tuesday. So if you right. are feeling the creative bug and you need an outlet to meet queer people and write every Tuesday, ages 12 to 19, link in our bio. Um, and yeah, we're, we're, we're doing all sorts of stuff. We talk to people. Yeah, Ronnie is the best. We talk to <laughs> queer icons every Monday night. Um, and you're just great proof that you can be queer and have success and be an artist and it's just so it's so inspiring for me and definitely inspiring for everybody watching tonight my mom included <laughs> Shout out to and thank you so much for your time this was so fun and this was great yay oh and we can come to you too says celeste who's our co-founder who's watching if you are a part of a gsa at your high school or a gsa in your city and you're like i'd love you crazy, weird writer, artist people to come to my school. We will. We'll do it. Hats <laughs> off, my mom says. Oh, my God. Yes. All right, let's shut this down before there's more puns. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for your time. Let's be in touch. And you're wonderful. This was great. Bye. Have a good one. <laughs> Bye, everybody.